I bought this Rect M3 sight unseen from a thousand miles away and drove it back home. Was this a good idea? Probably not. Turns out the rear quarter panel was destroyed and it's gonna need more work than I originally planned on. In the last video, we went through some more of the damage and got the exhaust swapped out. Oh, oh. <laughs> but today, today boys, we went a little wild with our parts list. Homie, look at this. It is starting to come together. We got an absurd amount of parts, massive shipments in for the M3 track build. Also, this video is sponsored by my homies at Private Auto, but more on that later. You just came to show me how cute you look? <laughs> you look so Are cute. Are you filming in a video again, dude? Yeah. You look adorable. Have fun, love you. Bye. You guys look beautiful. Bye, old man. Mm -hmm. And bye, old <laughs> <laughs> the TikTok heart. Bye, I love you. Lucy. I love you. I love you. Bye, ya. You wanna help me work on the car later? Yeah, bro. What? Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> okay, love you. Have fun. Bye. See you in like two hours. Does this happen to anybody else? Seriously, I swear, like the minute it rains or snows, it starts looking disgusting outside. Like the water's great and all, and you know, God knows we need it, but. All right, that's gonna have to do for today. We got parts on parts on parts, baby. <laughs> I'm so stoked to get these on the M3 track car. We're gonna do the full tour, but quickly, we've got the Fortunato 510 series coilovers. Fortunato has been a favorite partner of mine and they were so hyped to work with me on the E92 build and I am equally as grateful. We also got Swift Springs on board with the upgrade. Now if you guys remember we did in fact weigh the E92 um, out at Riot Motorsport so we could get an exact corner weight and that translated to getting the proper setup for these coilovers because Fortunato builds everything from the ground up. They build everything custom including the valving, spring rates, everything. So based on the corner weight of this car as it sat when we weighed it, we've got 10K springs up front, 20K in the rear. Honestly, this is the first thing that I wanna change on the M3 because nothing changes a car quite like suspension. When you've got monster truck gaps in here, it just looks so gross. I and mean, this is totally gonna to tie the whole car together, but for the sake and ease of getting it on and off the lift, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna practice a little self-discipline, a little restraint. Now this is one of the most exciting sections. This one, not so much because uh, fluids and like maintenance, this isn't the most exciting part of a build, but it's so important. We've got a full transmission flush, rear diff flush, um, oil change obviously with the 300V Motul. This is the exact same oil that I ran in the Corvette and it did absolutely amazing. So fluids are on lock. We got a new Schroth racing harness because uh, we have this one they already came with the car and we didn't have a seat or harness on the other side. You guys remember, we had the car over at my homie Jack's house. We got these seats swapped in, but we didn't have an extra belt. So Gabe literally rode home the entire way with no seat belt. You didn't hear that from me. Now, I don't think I'm ever gonna sell this E92, but if I were going to, I would use Private Auto, the sponsor of today's video. Private Auto is the easiest way to close a private car sale instantly. Think of it as like the combination of Facebook Marketplace without the scams and like something like Venmo but without having limits on how much you can send. Because where Private Auto is truly different than any other car listing site or car marketplace is that it's transactional in nature. It's not just you're just going to list your car there for sale and hope that somebody calls your phone number, which you don't even want to give your phone number out anyway. But when I say transactional in nature, what I mean is you can complete the deal from e-signing the bill of sale to the, the actual movement of money. Like Private Auto is the only way to instantly and securely transfer funds over $10,000 right from the parking lot, including nights, weekends, holidays. You don't have to worry about any of that. It's got a robust marketplace where each listing includes a vehicle history report, um, a value report, uh, secure messaging, and tons more. And easily my favorite feature is the seller preferences. When I sell a car, like everybody knows this feeling. When somebody comes for a test drive, you don't know, do they have the money for the car? I don't know, do they just wanna drive your car? And especially when you're selling something like a modified vehicle that's fun to drive, you can get a lot of tire kickers. So in private auto, you can set up specific seller preferences like uh, requiring buyers to have verified funds. It just requires the buyer to have the verified funds before they can actually schedule a test drive with you. So mega shout out to Private Auto for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to go check them out. First link in the description down below. This I am way more excited about than I should be. This is the Carbon Tech full carbon floor and dead pedal. Now for the body panels, I was on the fence about going full carbon or going fiberglass. Now, 
based on recent events, I have now wrecked one car in my entire life. And um, I hope that it'll never happen again, but heaven forbid something happens, carbon is extremely expensive to replace. Even if I just have like a little me, like teeny tiny little bump. Fixing carbon is not cheap, trust me. I looked into it. I had a few people refer me to some carbon repair guys here in Utah because they thought that this could potentially be repaired. I know, sounds crazy, right? I also gave them a super weird look when they said that something like this could be repaired, but they insisted and I did send it to a guy and he did say that it probably could be repaired. It wasn't the worst he had ever seen. It wasn't completely destroyed. Most of these panels are still intact and a lot of these are just like hairline cracks and fractures. But when it came down to price and actually getting it quoted to fix something like that or even something somewhat more minor than this door, it was so insanely expensive to the point where paying to just get the door replaced started to make a lot more sense in fiberglass. And fiberglass is nearly as light as carbon fiber. Of course, there are a bunch of advantages to going with carbon. It's a little bit stronger, it is a little bit lighter, and it looks gangster. That's probably like the biggest flex about it. But fiberglass, when it's painted, is super rigid. It is super strong. It's gonna look a lot more like an OEM door, which I am totally fine with. So when it came to deciding what parts I was gonna get for the build, I opted for mostly carbon fiber because it is literally like it's probably a third of the price. Um, we've got these new fenders and this is a topic up for debate. I'm not totally sure which way I'm going. Yes, it is also covered in water now that I left it out in the rain, but I'm not a big fan of these fenders. These ones that came on the car. What do you guys think? I, yes, they're carbon fiber. I don't really like this design. I feel like it's a little bit too much like wannabe GT3 RS type thing. Like they kind of mimic that same style. It's not quite my cup of tea. So I did get these. I think these are super dope. I really like the venting in this style better. I do like this rear cutout here behind uh, the front tire. So I think I'm gonna go with these, but what do you guys think? And then this is probably the piece that I am most impressed with. This is the fiberglass hood and all of these parts, by the way, are from DTM Fiberworks. These guys are actually super legit. The pricing is so fair. Like it was so reasonably priced to get all of these parts, the side skirts, the wing, the door, the front lip, the hood, all of this stuff was super well priced and the quality, like especially on the hood, I am so impressed with. It's light, it's completely made out of fiberglass as well. It has like the proper backing here. It even had this nice little touch here that has the M3, um, what is that, like embossed or like ingressed on it. Yo, look who's back. You ready to work on cars? Yeah, dude. Okay, check out all this stuff. What in the? What in the heck in the world? What in the heck in the fart? <laughs> Can you tell me what any of these parts are? You remember what these are called? Coil you put them on before you've done a full install. Coilovers. 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 Wait, a door? A door? Uh-huh, a door. Like the front of the car? Yep, it's the hood. The hood. And like the middle part that goes under it. Yep, this is the front lip. Front lip? Or the splitter, yep. And then this is all of our maintenance stuff. These are all the other carbon fiber parts wait, and wait. body parts. Wait, are we gonna wash the cars today? <laughs> We're not gonna wash the cars because it's raining, but we are gonna put some of this stuff on. And I need your help. Uh, here's what I need your help for, ready? See this space back here? It is teeny tiny back there. I am large, you are small. I need you <laughs> to get back here. Okay, but can you read this right here? What does that say? Fire. <laughs> yeah, it says fire. So uh, whatever you do, don't pull that thing because then we're gonna get a bunch of fire extinguisher stuff everywhere. <laughs> and just make a big mess. All right, ready? Can you climb back there, you think? <laughs> Crawl in, you got it? You got it? You're in. Okay, we gotta feed this through. Lucy's got the zip tie. Got that unlocked, ready? I need your help. So here's how it goes. If you're gonna feed your harnesses through, this is exactly how you do it. Cause you're gonna need to know this for your future car. Lucy's putting a zip tie in my ear. <laughs> Such a king. <laughs> Lucy, stop. Stop putting the zip tie in my ear. <laughs> stop. Okay, we have the buckle here. Okay, it has two slots. We go up and over through the back. Ready? Do we go under or on top of the roll bar? Uh, we go under and then it goes on top. And then we feed this piece back through. See? Comes this way. And then we're going to pull it all the way through until we create a little loop around our roll bar right here. 
See that? We just want to leave a little bit of a gap. Dude, race cars cool or race cars not cool? Race cars awesome. <laughs> Lucy, are race cars cool or race cars not cool? Yes. <laughs> okay. And then we feed the rest of our slack through here once we've created the loop. See that? Yes. Pull the rest of the slack all the way through like that. Then we go back through one last time. And then we roll it up like a little burrito. You see the ones on the other side over here? Yeah. See how they're rolled up like a little burrito? Yeah, two burritos. Can you do that for me? This is as good as I can do it. You're doing great. I just love that you're helping me. June got it nice and rolled up. I'm going to tighten it up. June, you killed it. This is dope. Way to go. How many six-year-olds do you think have put on harnesses on a race car? Zero, except me. <laughs> Probably pretty close to that. Okay, and then we need our zip-tied lady. Hey. <laughs> zip-tied lady. Zip-tied baby. Thank you. Of course, of course you think it's funny. Okay, and then you just loop this through. It'll hold all of your slack. Oh gosh, this is a mess. <laughs> Zip tie this down. Robert Dykes, cut the little excess off. We're good to go. Thank you. All right, well that's enough of the car circus for today. These girls are checking out the reflections in the car. Uh, we got a lot of work to do. We're gonna throw all these parts on. As usual, we made it this far in the video. <laughs> You're a real one. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. See you guys in the next one.